foundation inspection. We've got a lot of uh, stuff growing up around the foundation here. So you can't see it properly. And take it down a bit, but I can tell you actually this is not good because it's going to allow dampness to get into the brickwork. Also allows insects in there and your uh, termite inspector will tell you a bit about that. You can see down here it's completely covered. The foundation of the porch. Again the, the, uh, the grey is in contact with the brickwork and that can lead to dampness inside the, the cavity space of the walls. Here we've got a um, downpipe draining directly onto the ground by the foundation and that will cause problems. That should be extended out so that it uh, dumps the water out on the drive here, not next to the foundation. So we're continuing with plant growth around the foundation. And here we've got more grade in contact with the, uh, with the brickwork. Again, it will raise problems uh, with uh, dampness in between the walls. We're standing at the right elevation. We still have this continuing problem with uh, plants growing up the walls and making it almost impossible to get a clear view of the foundation. In fact, I can't really say I'm able to inspect the foundation at uh, the front elevation due to the plant growth. We're now moving to the right elevation. Here we can see the foundation nicely exposed. This is what we're looking for, about four inches. Um, there's a lot of ant activity around here. Uh, you'll see that in your uh, report. Um, this is okay. It's a post-tension cable uh, foundation and we have a post-tension cable head which is exposed and that's got to be uh, cut, and cut off. That little bit that's exposed there needs to be cut off and then uh, a, a uh, parging put over it to protect it. Continuing on the left elevation. Now we have the opposite problem here, so we have at the front. In fact it's eroded and so we're losing um, grade away from the foundation. It should be built up to about four inches. We have another problem here, you can see the post-tension cable end is showing. And just here there's a crack in the foundation itself. It's very common. Uh, probably there from the day that the uh, house was uh, the foundation of the house was laid. Another extension that needed to be put onto this uh, gutter downpipe. We're now moving to the rear elevation. Again this is foundation inspection. So post cable ends exposed all the way along the rear elevation here, they need to be covered up. So we're now moving to the right elevation, again post tension cable ends exposed. We're at the uh, right elevation and we're looking at the grade, it's a grade inspection. Here we've got a uh, downpipe entering uh, water right onto the grade here. And the means of draining this area have been removed because originally there would have been a swale here and there's not. So this has difficulty in draining. The fence has been put over the top of it, it's been added later. And as a consequence, this area is never gonna dry properly left as it is at the present time. Um, the solution would be to put in some French drains in this area and to carry the water off either to the front of the yard or to the rear of the yard but it certainly needs to have some drainage introduced here. We're moving now to the rear elevation. What we're looking for is the condition of drainage away and it actually will, it's sloping away from the house so it should drain 
reasonably well in this area. Now we're moving to the left elevation of the property. Again, uh, a fence has been built along the swale. Uh, this area is not so bad, it's draining better. But it still may, in conditions of heavy rainfall, require a French drain system to remove the massive amounts of water that can cumula accumulate in an area like this. We're now at the front elevation and here we need to pay attention to a number of things. First thing is these large trees. Large trees close to this to the property are a, poor, are, are a problem. These trees have root systems that can easily go underneath the house and as a consequence of that they can undermine the property and its foundation. Uh, we'll check to see if there's any issues at the moment but I might tell you right away that it's probably a good idea at some point to introduce root barriers in and around these areas where you've got these trees growing. You have another problem with trees and that is their, their uh, ability to invade sewer systems. Uh, we can't see the downpipe uh, clearing out yet, they'll be in the front yard somewhere but I would recommend that you have a sewer can put down by a plumber to inspect the sewers to make sure they're not, uh, they're not full of tree roots. It's something that can occur in areas where you've got a lot of trees growing uh, and, uh, and, and the, the trees invade the roots as a means of getting water. So roof inspection, we're going to start by looking at the soffits and at the low level what we can see of the flashings. There's a soffit vent up here.
So soft events located on the left hand elevation, both on the lower and upper roof. Soffit vents here. But there's no attic vents, no vents on the actual roof itself uh, for this system here. Uh, so this is not going to be getting correct ventilation. It's on the uh, left hand elevation, left hand and right and rear elevation. We have soft vents but uh, no exhaust vents. And same situation is on the right elevation at the rear. Now on the roof we have turbine vents, one, two, three, four turbine vents. And then the soffit vents, there's insufficient soffit vents for the upper roof. Do a quick calculation here. We've got a uh, 12 by 4 uh, aperture, so 4 12 48 square inches, 144 square inches in a square foot. We want quite a few square feet, so each one of those is a third of a square foot. So we've got one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten vents divided by three, and we've got about three point three square foot, say four square foot at max. There's no attic ventilation up here, it's okay to some on the other side. Let's go and look at the front elevation. Again, what we're concerned with here is ventilation. Okay, so insufficient attic ventilation. I'll put that in the report for you and explain in uh, simple terms what it means and how you can fix it.
We're in the upper attic, uh, the one entered through the door. Um, first comment is considerable uh, disturbance of the insulation, making it pretty ineffective. Um, other than that, there's no evidence of water leaks at the present time that I can see. This is a vent for the bathroom extractor, you see the extractor unit down there, and this is the vent to it. You see it's completely adrift, fallen down, um, completely useless. What that means is damp air is being exhausted into the attic, that's not a good thing. That can lead to organic growth, like mould and stuff like that, um, and reduce the efficiency of your um, insulation. We're uh, at the uh, entrance of the attic, there's the door here, and as you walk through the attic, you look to your right, there's a vent pipe. And that vent pipe has actually had water running down it, and you can see it's been dripping onto the insulation there, uh, causing a depression, so I think there's a water leak present. In fact, I don't think there is a water leak present in the roof. There's evidence of water penetration running down this pipe. It's a flue pipe to the furnace in the upper attic. And uh, there's a lot of light coming through the, the, the flashings. It needs to be investigated to make sure it's not leaking. Wall inspection, wall and windows actually looking for is movement in the foundation and all the brickwork and you can see here this is uh, just a decorative feature but it, uh, like a, a wall here and a gate but over the top you can see it's moving cracking that probably requires stabling stabilizing otherwise that wall is going to fall down it could be quite dangerous you see quite large cracks either side of it so that that can't be ignored that needs to be fixed uh, you don't want that falling on somebody We're at the front right elevation. No signs of movement in the brickwork. When foundations move in North Texas, it's the brickwork that shows it, it cracks. So we're simply looking for cracks in the brickwork to see if there's any here, any signs that, that, that the brickwork is moving. Now these windows along here, they're all uh, suffering from very, very poor corking. That means water almost certainly is getting in behind these walls. It's got to be recorked. You do not want dampness in between your walls. It's a cavity. It's intended to be dry. Um, and it won't be if you've got uh, uh, poor corking like we see here. Moving to the front entrance of the portico. Thank you. 
Okay, now let's pour mortar joints all the way down here. And that's going to allow water in between that wall and that can get into your ceiling systems above your ground floor. So that's on the left hand side of the elevation, you can see a crack in it, you can come up and look at it, you'll see it. We're at the left elevation. Corking again, it's very poor around this window. I reckon all the windows around this house need to be corked. Now we're at the left elevation, we've got another wall and the wall is moving away from the actual building itself um, that will continue to move unless it's stabilized I wouldn't mind bedding it's due to the build up of moisture in this area uh, and the constant drying and wetting and drying and wetting we've had in recent times with the drought We're now at the left elevation looking in the wall system and we have a new window installed here. This one was broken, got glass here. And we have missing screens. This window is fogged. And unless the windows have been replaced, most of the windows in this house will have seals that are failing. Just like this one, you can see where the moisture has been running down inside. Continuing with the windows and walls. I get my words tied. Now you've got gaping great holes in the walls here on both the air conditioning units where it's going through. Absolutely terrible. I mean, anything you get through there, that's big enough for, for rats. Oh, that's got to be blocked. There's a little bit of settlement over the top of this door here, it's tiny, um, very common. Almost no corking on this window here. All the windows need recorking around the entire house, including the uh, windows on the, the second floor. This ceiling inspection, ceiling of floors, we're looking for um, issues with flooring cracks, damage, water penetration in the ceilings. This is visual, we'll do an infrared scan a little bit later. This has been recently painted, so any sort of movement cracks would have been covered up by the paint. However, despite the best efforts of the decorators, those cracks will appear pretty quickly, so we'll see them if they're there.
why it's not working in this closet. So look at the ceilings on the upper floor. Door inspections. What we're looking for is damage to the threshold where water could get through. Security. Uh, the condition of this door and the frame is good. Well, this sliding door, oh, okay, there's a lock up here. Let's undo it. Seal's okay. It's a bit worn, showing its age, a bit of damage around here. The door lock on this sliding door doesn't work, so it doesn't lock. Let's go and look at the garage door. The garage door should be a fire door. It is, it's heavy. We have a weather seal around it, which is correct. This mortar slot does not match. Oh, okay, the uh, garage door opens have been disconnected. This wall here has cracks in it and there's holes in the mortar. As a result of that, over a long term, water's got into this wall here. You can see down here it's rotted the actual finish inside the, uh, the, the, the garage. So there's wood rot there, there's wood damage. Uh, that needs to be checked out. There could in fact be uh, organic growth in there or um, some types of insects. There's a stair rail at the top of the uh, stairs and you can see I can move it so it's not too good. Also you've got a gap greater than four inches between the two 
between the spindles and even greater here and the child can get their head trapped in a space like that and it shouldn't be greater than four inches and it is